Greetings to you from St. Benjamin's Lutheran Church in the village of Meadow Creek in Westminster, Maryland. I'm Pastor David Schaefer. I welcome you on this Father's Day weekend to these YouTube devotions. Happy Father's Day to all those who fit that bill. We thank you for fatherly influences in our lives and for the special men that walk with um, God in terms of their uh, relationship with him and with one another. Um, we salute fathers on this Father's Day weekend. It's also that time where um, we're kind of getting into the summer stretch here, and we hope these next two Sundays, June 21st and June 28th, to have our drive-in church, and then hopefully looking ahead to um, July having pavilion church and being able to be outside under our pavilion using canopies as shade on really nice summer Sundays, be together, keeping social distance and sharing in God's love and worship of our good and gracious God there. Stay tuned. We begin our time of worship today with prelude to this day. Well, you join me in the brief order for confession and forgiveness. We have gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We pause in confession. And we say together, Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we make light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our opening hymn, ELW 660, if you are using the Lutheran Book of Worship at home, 377. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends at home, we will hear in a little while a scripture reading about God knowing all of God's creatures, the sparrows, it's a kind of bird, about God knowing each of the hairs on our head. It's an interesting, interesting, huge concept for us to think about. How God knows all. God is in charge of all. God has created all. I know a number of you have, not sparrows at home, but pets. All kinds of pets. Dogs, cats, birds, bunnies, salamanders. Anybody have any ants in an ant farm? That used to be popular when I was a kid a long time ago. Um, gerbils or hamsters. We know a little bit about gerbils at our house. 
they were just too quick to uh, populate. It's just crazy. But anyhow, God knows all about those pets of ours, takes care of them. It's a great way for us to show our love for God's creatures, and they, in turn, show their love uh, back to us. And usually dogs and cats and other pets that are inside and are actually free to run the house are really good about sensing um, when you need to have their love and their care the most. And you too probably are sensitive about how they need love and care. And you know just what they like, just scratch around the ears, um, a walk around the neighborhood. You're pretty in tune with your pets. And when pets are no longer able to be with us and they go to be with God and they go over the Rainbow Bridge, um, they're taken care of by God forever and ever. I firmly believe that. So we thank you, God, for the way you've created all of your creatures, and especially thank you for pets. We thank you for knowing all the sparrows and all the other animals that are out there in our great green creation, and we thank you, too, for knowing all about us, and that you take good care of us, and that you even have it figured out, um, these hairs on our head, that you are that close to us. Thank you, God, for taking good care of us. Now, may we take care of your creation. As we pray in Jesus. Amen. The first reading for today is from Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah accuses God of forcing him into a ministry that brings him only contempt and persecution. Yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be a strong protector against his enemies and commits his life into God's hands. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, but they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 69, verses 7 through 18. If you could answer with me at home with the refrain, Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Psalm 69. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. Answer, answer me, O Lord, Lord for, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, for, for your, your love is kind. kind. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, for, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, for, for your, your love, love is kind. kind. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, Lord, for your, your love is kind. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, Lord for, for your love is kind. kind. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Answer, Answer me, O Lord, Lord for, for your love is kind. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. 
Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Answer, answer me, O Lord, Lord, for your love is kind. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Answer, answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. The second reading is from Romans chapter 6. In baptism, we were incorporated into the reality of Christ's death and resurrection. We have been made new in Christ through his death and resurrection to live free from sin. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died in sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also con consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our Holy Gospel for this third Sunday after Pentecost comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, but even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. On this Father's Day, I'd like to share with you a story about Grandpa's hands. Grandpa's hands. Grandpa, some 90 plus years, sat feebly on the patio bench. He didn't move, just sat with his head, staring down at his hands. When I sat down beside him, he didn't even acknowledge my presence, and the longer I sat, 
I wondered if he was okay. Finally, not really wanting to disturb him, but wanting to check on him at the same time, I asked him if he was okay. He raised his head and looked at me and smiled. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for asking, he said in a clear, strong voice. I didn't mean to disturb you, Grandpa, but I was noticing how you were just sitting there staring at your hands, and I wanted to make sure you were okay, I explained to him. Have you ever looked at your hands, he asked. I mean, really looked at your hands? I slowly opened my hands and stared down at them. I turned them over, palms up, and then palms down. No, I guess I had never really looked at my hands as I tried to figure out the point that he was making. Grandpa smiled and related the story. Stop and think for a moment about the hands you have, how they have served you well throughout these years. These hands, though wrinkled, shriveled, and weak, have been the tools I've used all of my life to reach out and grab and embrace life. They braced and caught my fall when I was a toddler, I crashed upon the floor. They put food in my mouth and clothes on my back. As a child, my mother taught me how to fold them in prayer. They tied my shoes and pulled on my boots. They dried the tears of my children and caressed the love of my life. They held my rifle and wiped my tears when I went off to war. They have seen dirty, scraped and raw, swollen and bent. They were uneasy and clumsy when I tried to hold my newborn son. Decorated with my wedding band, they showed the world that I was married and loved someone very special. They wrote the letters home and trembled and shook when I buried my parents and spouse and walked my daughter down the aisle. Yet they were strong and sure when I dug my buddy out of the foxhole and lifted a plow off my best friend's foot. They have held children in these hands. They have consoled neighbors and shook fists in anger when I didn't understand. They have covered my face, these hands. They have combed my hair and washed and cleansed the rest of my body. They've been sticky and wet, bent and broken, dried and raw. And to this day, when not much of anything else of me works really well, these hands hold me up, lay me down, and again continue to fold in prayer. These hands are the mark of where I've been and the ruggedness of my life. But more importantly, it will be these hands that God will reach out and take when he leads me home. And with my hands, he will lift me to his side. And there I will use these hands to touch the face of Christ. I will never look at my hands the same again. But I remember God reached out and took my grandpa's hands and led him home. When my hands are hurt or sore, or when I stroke the face of my children and my wife, I think of Grandpa. I know he has been stroked and caressed and held by the hands of God. May you and I all measure up to our Heavenly Father's profound love for us, and may we always sense God's hands being upon us. Amen.
join together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father God Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse verses together to form your church. Open our hearts, unstop our ears to learn from one another. The differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. You knew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds in their habitats. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees, migrant, migrants, while their homeland struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who, belong to, who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. Receive these, our prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now may God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or even imagine, grant us the gifts of faith, hope, and love. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>